Welcome back. Super excited moving forward. In this lecture, I'm going to demonstrate and we're going to talk about also how to go about configuring your GitLab runners, right? So essentially what we'll do is so that you can actually see the best practices in action. We are going to go ahead and first navigate to well, explore the Google Cloud Platform Kubernetes area, right? We're going to take a look at our instance and then open up the shell. From there on out, we will jump into the GitLab environment. We are going to go ahead and create a new project, uh, maybe clone a repository, right? It's much easier that way. So once we have the project clone into our repository, into our project, we are going to execute that particular project and then use Kubernetes, right? And then configure the runner to run the jobs for us. And then we'll start building our pipelines as we move forward. So just to give you the idea of the complete walkthrough, so to speak, not really complete, but at least part of it so that you understand what is a better way or the best practice to move forward working within Kubernetes and GitLab. All right, so I'm logged into the Google Cloud Platform. I'm gonna to navigate to, let's see, the instances here. I just wanna make sure, verify my instances here. So we'll use the GitLab 2 instance to configure this. In fact, uh, to run a job on this, right? So we're going to configure a GitLab runner for our GitLab 2 instance. So I'm going to open up the shell here. And we use this to actually run various commands, right? So there are two steps to this particular process. Now, before I actually start to demonstrate and start writing commands and actually demonstrating commands, I want to navigate to the GitLab environment as well. So you can actually see what that looks like. And then we can compare the Kubernetes to GitLab so we really understand what is going on, what is happening, and what is our goal, what is our ultimate objective, right? So at this point, I only connected to the instance, right? That's all I did so far, and I opened up the shell. So I'm going to navigate next. I'm going to minimize this to the GitLab environment. And notice we are connected, right? We've done this in previous lessons to Kubernetes, to our cluster, to our instance rather. And then in this particular project, let me see what projects I have right now. So currently, the only projects I have is, seems like just one old project that we created, right? So moving forward, we are going to create a new project, clone it, right? Like I mentioned earlier, and then build a simple pipeline. But before we do this, let's navigate to the Kubernetes area. Just kind of browse through it so you understand, and we'll take a look at what that is, right? So I'm going to open up this existing project, and then navigate to the CI CD, click on Kubernetes, and this is our Claytest 7 Kubernetes cluster. And notice, if I scroll down, there's an option called GitLab Runner, right? And what this does, it connects to the project's repository and then executes the continuous integration, continuous deployment jobs, pushing results back and deploying applications to production. Without this, obviously, we're not going to be able to run the full cycle. So I'm going to navigate to the settings and then click on CI CD. So this is where you can actually expand on the runner settings. And then we can either activate or specify and then run these runners. And these could be specific to projects. So let me slow down here a little bit, okay? So you understand. A runner is a process which runs a job, okay? We can set up as many runners as we need. So we can give it a name, right? So we can say let us one, two, three, or whatever. Each runner can be one of the following states, active or pause. So you can pause runners, you can activate runners once they are created and registered. To start serving our jobs, we can either add specific runners to the project or use shared runners. Now, shared runners, GitLab server does not provide any shared runners yet, okay? 
So we need to actually, in fact, configure a specific runner for this particular project so that it can run that job or jobs within that project. So I'm going to go ahead and first disable shared runners, even though it's enabled. Let's go back to our runner settings, expand, scroll down, and notice right now it's disabled. Now coming back to specific runners, to set up a runner automatically, we can install a runner on a Kubernetes cluster. And then we can click the button below to begin the install process by navigating to the Kubernetes page. From the Kubernetes cluster details, install runner from the application list. Secondly, we can set up a runner, specific runner, manually, which is install a runner compatible with a GitLab CI, specify the URL, which is the same URL as our instance, by the way, okay, so keep that in mind. And then we need the token. So we need to make sure that we have the token, right? So we copy and paste it somewhere so you have a record of this. I'm going to demonstrate how to do it manually, okay? So it's much easier to actually work that way because even as a best practice, you can, you can do it, you know, through Kubernetes, but I, I think as best practice because you may need multiple runners on different projects. So that way you can identify which runner is doing which job, okay? That way, it's easier to segregate and kind of combine and group runners together. So let's go ahead and set up a specific runner manually for our project. Of course, we have not created a project yet. The existing project that we're looking at is called Learning DevOps, okay? But you get the idea. So now that we've taken a look at the Kubernetes instance and the shell, and the GitLab environment regarding how to create the runners. Next, let's take a look at the commands that you will actually use or you need to run, to create the runner for this particular process and then register it. So here's our notepad buddy. Yes, there are a bunch of these commands that we need to run, right? So not to worry, about five commands that we need to run to install and then we need about seven, some are optional, commands to register the runner, okay? So fairly straightforward once we actually see it, but I'm gonna provide this as a downloadable resource so you can actually take a look at and then practice on your end as well. But again, this is to set up a manual runner within GitLab CI CD, perfect. So let's minimize this. Let's navigate to our compute engine within Kubernetes. And I believe we have the shell here. So I'm going to open up the shell for GitLab. Okay, so once we're connected to the shell, this is where we're actually just simply start running these commands to configure a runner. Let me make this bigger so you can actually see it's easier that way. Clear the screen. Perfect. So let's bring up our notepad here. The first is download the binaries, right? So that's the first step. And what binaries? This is the GitLab runner binaries. So I'm just going to copy this. That's just a simple wget command. And then paste it hit the enter key and what this is going to do is fetch all of the binaries for the GitLab runner downloads. Perfect. Once that's done, let's take a look at the second, which is give it permission to execute. So next, of course, once we've downloaded, we need to provide a set of permissions to the GitLab runner. So I'm going to copy this, paste, and then enter. So the permission is granted. Next, I'm gonna install Docker, and this is optional. You don't have to if you're not using Docker, but if you are using Docker, then you need to install it. And later on, once you register it, you need to actually provide or use the gitlab-ci.yaml file, okay? So if you choose to use Docker as your executor, 
once you register later on in subsequent steps will be asked for the default image okay so I'm going to demonstrate installing docker as well so just copy this and then paste this command in our shell this is going to execute and then of course I already have docker installed right all right so I'm going to install it anyways just so that we run through the entire process you understand how to actually set up a manual runner so while this is actually performing its duty here I'm going to copy the next command which is create the GitLab CI user and this is where I can either create my own name or use the default name right it's called GitLab runner I can give it a different name so I'm going to paste this and in fact let me change the name here so instead of it saying GitLab runner I'm going to say runner 7 here okay hit the enter key and now our step to create the GitLab CI user has been completed next which is step number five is install and run as a service so first we are going to just install so just copy this and then paste it of course I need to also make sure that this is called the GitLab runner 7 right because that's the name that I gave so I need to ensure that I'm using the username GitLab dash runner and then 7 hit the enter key and it says that to install GitLab runner the INIT already exists because there's already a path a folder that already exists for the runner service now if I were to start this as a next step okay for instance let's copy this I'll come back to this and hit the enter key notice our GitLab runner start actually executes now what happens if I were to not use the my own manual name right if I were to just install GitLab runner as a user and then try to start it because obviously this is GitLab runner start not GitLab runner 7 start right so there are two users that we're taking a look at right now so if I were to execute for example or let me just type it up runner 7 start it's going to say command not found okay because obviously we did not the init already exists but let's do this let's go back to step number four and create a GitLab user with just as per our instructions so of course it says that it already exists okay so our runner already exists we've already started next we just need to make sure that we register the user now the reason why we actually got the error is because it's using the same working directory as the GitLab runner so we just need to create a new directory and then follow the same set of commands within that directory to install the runner okay and how about if I assign you some homework which is super exciting right so let's try it out go ahead as your homework create a new directory and then create a new runner within that directory all right so once our install steps are completed which is the one two three four five this aside a little bit next we are going to go ahead and register the runner and that's important to register it so that it shows up within the GitLab environment so let's go ahead and clear this screen let's run the first command for the registration let's copy it and then let's paste it as our first command which is sudo GitLab runner register so hit the enter key 
and it's going to say please enter the GitLab CI coordinator URL which is the same URL as your instance which is of course step two here right so enter GitLab instance URL please enter the GitLab CI coordinator URL which is again could be kledas.com if you have DNS resolve or just the IP address so let's fetch the IP address navigate just minimize this navigate to my IP address which is right here I'm going to copy it and of course paste it here just in my notes here okay there we go so once I have this IP address I would need to then of course enter this IP address within the shell so let me bring up the shell here there we go so it just asks please enter the GitLab CI I'm gonna go ahead and paste it hit the enter key and of course it asks for the token right I remember where to go and fetch the token from good we need to go to our GitLab environment and fetch the token there we go so this is our token so I'm just gonna copy it and of course make sure your URL is the same or the IP address is the same for that instance so once I actually create or copy this token I'm gonna to navigate back to my shell here paste it perfect so next enter the GitLab CI description for this runner and again this could be any name right because this is our step number four that's where we are so enter the description for the runner and just give any name so I'm gonna go ahead and provide a name I'm gonna call it claydesk 7 dash runner hit the enter key and next step is of course it asks for optional tags and these tags are you can actually tag them right so you can do comma separated tags such as claydesk 7 claydesk 8 9 10 and so on and each of those tags can run specific various jobs and then step number five is where the tags are right so if you do not wish to enter just hit the enter key and skip those tags similarly enter tags which is step six runner executor so let's first do the step five here so I'm gonna hit the enter key whether lock the runner to current project I'm just gonna hit the enter key and it's going to register the runner as being succeeded please enter the executor which is step number six here whether you're executing for virtual box docker ssh parallels shell docker machine kubernetes docker etc so i'm going to say kubernetes hit the enter key and the runner is successfully or registered successfully feel free to start it but if it's already running the config should be automatically reloaded okay so just in case let's revert back to our GitLab runner start right just to make sure otherwise we should be good so I'm going to run it anyways GitLab dash runner start perfect so just a series of steps to configure your manual runner now once I'm done let's take a look at let's validate whatever we've done so far right so to validate we have to go to our GitLab environment so let's minimize this minimize our notepad let's navigate to our GitLab environment I'm gonna go back to my page or refresh either way let's go ahead and try refreshing and then expand the runner settings and perfect voila we have our first runner configured of course I can pause it I can remove it similarly you can have a bunch of runners right you can have quite 7 runner that the description that you gave or additional runners as well and these runners again are important right because as you create the project you'll have to assign the runners to that particular project and if I were to click on this runner it's going to give me the details of this particular runner number one the property name active the name itself the IP and so on 
So let's go back to our learning DevOps. Let's go ahead and clone a repository. Now to clone a repository, I'm gonna first create a new project, right? Remember, we were gonna actually do a new project. So just navigate to projects, click new project. And instead of a blank project, I'm gonna go ahead and use the import tab here and repo, git repo is what I'm gonna use. And I'm gonna enter a URL. Now, since we're gonna use some examples or sample uh, git clone repositories, let's navigate to our samples page here. I know I have it open here somewhere. There we go. So you can just simply go to gitlab.com groups and then gitlab-examples, right? Or search for gitlab examples and you'll be navigated to this particular page. This is uh, an example of repositories of various kinds that you can actually take a look at and work with. So instead of creating our own from scratch, it's gonna take forever. I'm gonna use one of these, any one of these, okay? In fact, let me scroll down and find something called Kubernetes because that's what we're working with. So I'm gonna click on Kubernetes example and simply copy the URL, right? So we can clone it. Once I copy it, let's go back to our project that we just are about to create which is right here, and then paste the URL here. So this is gonna fetch the Git repository URL once I have it here. It, by default, it gives a name called Kubernetes example, and I can choose to make it private, internal, or public. It's up to you. We can say public for now. Click Create Project, and this is gonna go ahead and actually create the project for us. And the import is in process, once it's done, it's gonna list out all of the files for us. There we go. So once we clone the project, we simply would have to go back to adding a Kubernetes cluster to this particular project and just assign the cluster, right? So click on add Kubernetes cluster, add an existing Kubernetes cluster, give it a name. I'm gonna call it Clidesk5. The API URL is right here. So I'm just gonna copy the URL for my instance. And remember the token, we have it in our notes here somewhere that we've been saving all along. So let me scroll up. And here it is, there's our default token path. Copy this, paste it. And recall, you can find this within the Kubernetes environment under the secret keys, right? Configuration settings within the Kubernetes compute engine or the Google Cloud Platform and you can dig out the token path from there. So add the Kubernetes cluster to this particular project. Perfect. So we have our integration. And if I scroll down, let's navigate to our runner, right? Settings page, CI CD, runner settings, I'm gonna expand. And then follow the same process to assign the runner. If I were to do it manually, right? Okay, so just wanna make sure that you understand we have to start serving our jobs. We can either add a specific runner or use a shared, but of course, GitLab server does not provide any shared runners yet. So let's go ahead and disable shared runners. And there we go. So I first demonstrated how to create a runner and then at the end demonstrated how to clone a simple repository. So as a homework, go ahead, add a project, pick one of those example projects and add a runner to it. So I hope this helps, fairly long lecture, but very important as working within the, the realm of best practices, this is something that you wanna set up the environment, right? So you as a senior project manager, architect, or the, the manager itself, you need to ensure that the environment is conducive so that it's end-to-end -end set up before developers can jump in and start doing their coding or programming. So go ahead and practice. In the next lesson, I'm gonna maybe demonstrate how to move forward and, and build a pipeline. So let's move to the next lesson.